student from Doncaster and I've recently been awarded third prize in Doncaster Art Fair's current exhibition, Art as a Response to Mental Health, with my self-portrait with dishevelled hair. And that's also given me the opportunity to work on this project. So today I'll be talking to you about feminism and feminists in the art and art world over the past 100 or so years because you only ever hear about the art masters of their practice being Picasso or Van Gogh, Michelangelo or Monet, hardly ever about the women artists in the Western world. So in Western art history there were many women who had done lots of paintings and earned a lot of money for it in ancient Europe and there are lots of women helping out their male figures in their life, so like their fathers with their paintings, and they even went on to do and make their own practice. Yet art historians and critics have totally overlooked these efforts made by women artists in the past, and there's a great gaping big hole of where women artists lay in art history. Okay, so I'll begin with the awakening of this awareness about the lack of female figures in the art world by introducing the Guerrilla Girls. They're a group of women artists and activists who are fighting against sexism and racism in the art world and cultures. They had emerged in the 1980s after they put posters in downtown Manhattan, angry about the lack of female artists in the Museum of Modern Art. They use humour to prove that feminists can be funny and wear gorilla masks to, to keep their identity and focus on what issues they tackle rather than their looks or personalities. In the poster, The Advantages of Being a Woman Artist, the Guerrilla Girls joke that women artists work without the pressure of success and have the opportunity to choose between a career and motherhood and not feel embarrassed about being called a genius. These artists are hyper aware about the struggles what women face in the art industry and especially with it being topical of the 1980s where it was predominantly women being the main caregivers for the family whilst working as well. Another poster I find really interesting, when racism and sexism are no longer fashionable, what will your art collection be worth? Is a retaliation against culture and a treatment of women and artists of colour. It contains what is a huge list of names by those artists, such as Frida Kahlo, Georgia O'Keeffe and Hannah Hock, which I'll talk about later, where for the same price you would pay for one Jasper Johns painting, you could buy one piece of all those artist works combined. It really makes you think, why is there such a huge difference in money and demand for women artists and artists of colour? Georgia O'Keeffe is the next artist I'm going to talk about. O'Keeffe was born in Wisconsin in 1887 and she had some exposure to the art world as one of her parents was an art teacher. Many of her paintings were unique and nothing like anyone had ever seen before. And she had married photographer and art dealer Alfred Steiglitz and they moved to New York and he helped promote her work and encourage her in a very male-centred world. She had taken this male gaze and used it to her advantage by painting flowers which were very suggestive of female genitalia. She was producing this new and striking work in the 1920s which was totally different to the female moods which were seen and recognised by audiences like in the Romanticism movement. This sexualised approach helped with the demand of her work and she was actually the first woman to have her own retrospective exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in 1946. Hannah Hock was a German artist and she first became involved with the Dadaism movement whilst in school with fellow artist Ralph Hausmann and they later became a couple. Dadaism is a movement which challenges the very essence of a bourgeois society she was one of the first artists to make photo montages like The Father, yet the men in the Dada movement didn't want to exhibit alongside them at first because she was a woman. This is something which had threatened men at this time because the new woman emerging from the Weimar Republic's golden age in the 1920s was independent. She wore different clothes which were more revealing and she smoked. Her partner Raoul also didn't like this about her, so she dumped him for not encouraging her artwork, but for her requirement to support him and bear him a child. After this, she began to include more androgynous and lesbian figures in her work to reflect her own relationships. One of her earlier pieces of work, cut with a kitchen knife, is a reflection of feminism through the satire in her work, as it depicted women's battle against men including the political figures in the fight to get the right to vote, 
which they received shortly before this piece of work was made. Hock didn't exhibit any of her own work, unfortunately, until the end of the Second World War was over. Now we move on to Tracy Emin. Tracy Emin had become popular in the 1980s and 90s with the young British artist group known as the YBAs. Emin's work tackles her very personal histories, and most personal of these is her work My Bed, which she had gained a Turner Prize nomination for. Emin had lived in this bed over a period of time, and you can see her lifestyle so raw in this installation piece with objects such as bottles of vodka, cigarettes, condoms, and blood-stained underwear. Her practice spans many media, including installation, drawing and textiles. Her work, Everyone I've Ever Slept With, 1963-1995, to 1995, is a tent and it's a textile piece with the identities of, well, everyone she's ever slept with. One of them being Sarah Lucas. Sarah Lucas also emerged with the YBAs and she often uses humour to discuss the topic of women's culture in her work. And she often works with collage, sculpture and photography. Barbara Kruger is a visual artist with a past in advertising, which often influences her work with the use of typed captions. In her work, she declares a cultural hierarchy with the use of her declarative pronouns, as seen in pieces, I shop, therefore I am. The colour scheme of black, white and red is cleverly used to evoke associations with danger which she uses to highlight the importance of politics in general and the anger towards discrimination against women. So my last artist which I'm going to talk about today is my all-time favourite, Frida Kahlo. She was a Mexican painter turned feminist icon where you can see her legendary monobrow and flower crown on anything from cushions to tote bags and pant pots. She faced much turbulence in her life, which spread furiously into her paintings, as she often said she painted her reality. Born in 1907, which she changed her birth year to 1910 to be a child of the revolution. As a child, she suffered from polio, which did leave her partially disabled. But at the age of 18, she was in a severe bus crash accident, where she had a spine shattered and a handrail went through her vagina and she was bedbound until she was able to recover, leading her to pick up her father's oil paints just to fill time. From the accident, she was left with many gynecological problems, as you can imagine, and she was the first artist to ever paint a miscarriage in Henry Ford Hospital. She painted her actual fetus of her child and her pelvic bone to demonstrate what struggle her broken body had caused her. She described the bus crash as a first accident and the second one as Diego Rivera, her husband and communist mural painter who she had a toxic and passionate relationship with. This is depicted in the self-portrait as a tahuna, where Diego is literally on her mind, part of her. They were nicknamed the elephant and the dove. He had many affairs, but the affair which he had with her younger sister caused the divorce and she painted self-portrait with cropped hair, sitting in what looks like her ex-husband's oversized suit, establishing herself as an independent artist, even though they went on to be married the following year. And she had many of her own affairs with men and women. Later, leaving her again bedbound, she had her leg amputated because of sepsis. She had an exhibition in her own country of Mexico, which she'd never had before, and she was so stubborn that she arrived to the opening in her bed. Tragically, she died at the young age of 47, but she wished to never return. I find that my own work does fit in with the framework of feminism. I've just completed my first year of studying Bay Honours in Fine Art, which I experimented with ceramics, bookbinding and screen printing. Similar to O'Keefe, I'd use flowers often in my own work as a metaphor for femininity. 
In the books I made, Modern Opinions, I paired floral screen printed imagery along with comments which highlight some of the struggles which women face today. I used satire like Hock did in my performance piece, The Hopeless Housewife, a depiction of post-war women roles. And I did this using the typeface of that era and mocking the chores which women did as their full-time jobs. something today from this exposure to women and feminism in the art world. To end this talk I'd like to thank Doncaster Council for sponsoring this programme which was curated by Toomwood Russell. Doncaster is a great place for the arts with help from organisations such as Doncaster Art Fair to help buy and sell artists work and for holding exhibitions like the one that I'm featuring at the moment. It does help make the art scene more vibrant in this town.